Hi, and welcome to Theology Therapist. Today, I wanted to talk to you about limiting beliefs. A limiting belief is anything that, any thought, any belief you have that restricts you in some way. So here's some examples of limiting beliefs. A limiting belief could be, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I am not smart enough. Um, a lot of that is the, the enoughness. Now, it's not only about enoughness, it could be about any number of things. You know, a limiting belief could even be, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not safe. And you might be like, Hannah, but you know, I might be safe in this situation. Well, you know, that is where um, meeting with a therapist or maybe a trusted friend or having the skills that I'm gonna to talk to you about today uh, to go through and parse out the belief itself to see if it's realistic or helpful. What makes uh, it a limiting belief limiting? In the example I gave, I'm not safe. Now, um, in, in what happens after trauma is that somebody's sense of safety is totally changed. They no longer feel safe in the world, right? So even someplace like the grocery store at 9 a.m. doesn't feel safe. You know, being with trusted friends, you're, like even these spaces that potentially had nothing to do with the event itself, they no longer feel safe. And so in that way, it's a limiting belief because it is likely preventing that per person from living in a way that they would like to. It may be preventing them from going to the grocery store as often as they may need to. Or it may mean that when they're at the grocery store, they feel really hyper alert. They feel really on edge, tense. They might be irritable at the thought of going. They might avoid going to the grocery store. Or they may even um, experience panic attacks. And so they may have to cut grocery shopping short, right? So all of these are different examples of limiting belief and how it can actually impact us. So a limiting belief is really about the way that we want to show up versus our perception of how we are showing up um, or our perception of how others view us, uh, the space that we take up, our ability to be in the world or to be safe, like I was just giving that example. For example, in a lot of spaces nowadays, there is a lot of room for activism. And I think that there's a lot of room for one kind of activism. And I think it's a really important kind, so it's a really um, typically loud, and it's typically, it can be angry. I mean, it's like really for whatever the cause is that it is a part of, right? That whatever the cause the is that it's trying to further, even with something like activism. I think that we can be concerned with how we are showing up versus how others perceive us. So in 2020, when Black Lives Matter was really active, like there were lots of protests happening, there were lots of activities um, to be a part of and ways to show up, I met with a lot of clients who were a part of, were participating in this, but that, that wasn't really the thing that was creating that uncertainty about their contribution to whatever it is that they care about, right? The thing that actually was creating uncertainty was how they were showing up on social media. And so were they posting about it on social media? Were they as vocal about it? Were they as maybe upset about it on social media as other people that they're connected to, as other people that they follow and who follow them? And that discrepancy really affected how they feel like they are able to contribute. It really affected how much they thought that they were participating in something that they care about, like Black Lives Matter in 2020. I think that we can all come up with a ton of beliefs in the not enough category that pass through our mind or that we even believe from time to time, 
for myself, I, I think that I also feel like I'm not, you know, enough of an activist. And especially in this discourse that we're talking about, I think that it can feel like the way that I'm participating in this, the way that I'm showing my support is not enough. And while there may be cases when that's true, while there may be cases when there is actually room for me to grow um, and expand and find new ways of being active and communicative about the thing that's really close to my heart, the thing that's really near and dear to my heart, it may not feel authentic for me to post on social media. It may not feel authentic for me to disown every family member that disagrees with me or uh, defriend, unfriend every family member or person from high school that disagrees with me. It may not feel authentic. It also may not feel like it's furthering the conversation very well. I wonder if you, like, have you thought, have you, do you have somebody like an uncle or an aunt or a teacher from high school where they post stuff on social media and you're like, oh my gosh, right? Or do you have friends that you know who they post on social media and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish they show up. They, people know that they care about this. People don't know that I care about this which must mean that they think I don't care about this. And I think that's where the problem is. That's where we start to get tripped up because then we go down that path. We, get, we just start creating a story around it. Some folks, I think, come much more naturally to that loud activism, right? And so today if we're kind of talking about limiting beliefs and we're using activism as an example. So as I said before, I would love to be somebody who is a loud activist and I, I would love for that to be the first thing that people see about me and you know try as I might I've tried for a lot of years actually it just seems it doesn't come all that naturally to my personality for whatever reason I have these intersecting identities that make it much easier for me to bridge the gap right to speak two different languages almost, right? So when I went to Boston from Texas, it was, it was like learning to speak two different languages. So as I was coming into my beliefs and feeling my feet underneath me, feeling much more strongly in them, I was going back to family who, or to friends, I didn't agree. What I had to learn is I had to develop the skill of being able to meet people where they were, even if I, I fundamentally disagree with that, meet them where they were and develop a listening relationship in order to talk to them about where I am. And that I think is what creates change, especially when we have this growing divide in America. And if we're not listening to each other, we're just going to get farther and farther apart. So. I have this limiting belief often that I'm not enough of an activist. But if I stop and I break down this belief and I think, is that realistic or accurate? Is there only one way to be an activist? Is there only one way to care about something, to try to further rights and fullness of life and humanity for something? or for someone, no. And so I can find my space as a moderate, although it's not the first thing that you see, right, on social media, it's not. It's, I think, the thing that's hopefully that on the ground work between the two sides to, to try to kind of bridge them and to try to bring them into conversation with each other. If I'm only focused on being the loud activist or being the kind of activist that I see other people being that I really wanna be, but that just doesn't feel natural or authentic to me, or just doesn't feel conducive to the life that I live and the circles that I'm in, and I only understand there being one way of being an activist, 
then I often feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed by caring about something so deeply and not participating in and in doing what my part, what I understand to be my part, if I'm going with this limiting belief, to make a difference. And that embarrassment can run deep society and even social media nowadays because information travels so much faster. Society only tells us that there is one way of being a certain way that society tells us, prescribes for us what's socially acceptable. For example, it's not really all that socially acceptable to be moderate. You need to stake a claim. You need to take a side. That's what we're told. But then what we get is a whole bunch of sides and nobody, no, no way to bridge the middle, to bridge the gap because we only understand there being one way of taking up space. So what do we do? How do I break down this belief if I'm an activist? Like how did I get to understand that there isn't one way of being an activist? Well, there's a really helpful worksheet that I wanna share with you. It's called an ABC worksheet. It's really simple, it's really basic, but it can be so huge in just beginning to break down our beliefs, our thoughts that happen. So the ABC worksheet, there are, um, there's a row, and in the row there are three boxes. The first is for the activating event, which is the thing that happened. The second, in the middle, is for our belief. So it's the thought, it's the belief. And the third is for the emotion. Now, oftentimes we get our emotions and our thoughts confused. And, you know, cause we say culturally, like, I feel like eating pizza, but is eating pizza really a feeling? No. I think it's important to review what are emotions. Emotions are one word, feeling words, right? There are feeling words. It's like embarrassed, pizza. could be excited, scared, stressed, fragile. There's tons, tons of different emotions. Our belief, we can often, I think what we often do is we often provide context in the belief where we provide evidence for our belief in the belief itself. So it might be, I'm not an activist because I don't post on social media. I might think that that's what goes in my little box, but actually our beliefs, our thoughts, they're the most concise and the most boiled down that we can get them. And usually one thing that can tip you off is if there's a because in there, usually everything that goes after that because is our evidence supporting that belief. So my evidence supporting I'm not an activist is because I don't post, post on social media, right? So all of that, I, because I would, I would sort of erase that. So I would have then in my middle box, I'm not an activist, plain and simple, that's it. My activating event might be scrolling through social media and realizing I didn't go to any of the protests or scrolling through social media and everybody's posting about the initiatives, the sort of grassroots initiatives that they are taking to support Ukrainian refugees. So I might see that, right? Like that's just a very plain and simple event. I might be scrolling through Instagram, see these images, and have the thought to myself, I'm not an activist. And then I would feel embarrassed. Okay, ABC. Below this, there are questions asking, is this belief realistic? And is this belief helpful? Now, is this belief realistic that I'm not an activist? Maybe, depends on when you ask me. After COVID, I'm not seeing as many people that I used to. I might also be trying to avoid crowds. So if I think that activism is going to protest and I'm not going, right, then, then I might I might be thinking, yes. But what if I am thinking about all the other ways that I participate in this, uh, all the other ways that I'm supporting the, the thing that I care about? Is it realistic that I'm not an activist? Because I, I don't post on social media about the things that I've done, but I'm, um, I'm connected with uh, friends that I met when I was in Ukraine. I'm connected, I'm, you know, talking to them, seeing what they need, trying to organize any emotional needs that they have, trying to support them in that way, any physical needs. If I think about it like that, I might think, well, I actually am, I am doing those other things. So 
if I'm doing those other things, well, maybe I could be an activist, right? So then we start to initiate like a little doubt there. Is it helpful? Is that thought helpful? I'm not an activist. Oh, it makes me feel like crap. Right? Like, it makes me feel terrible. And it actually, it doesn't even make me feel like I can participate. And it doesn't make me feel like I can be a part of it in any way because I feel like I'm already not. And I feel bad because of it. So not helpful. Those were questions one. I know, questions one, really. Question two. What can I tell myself in the future? This is a hard one. I guess I can tell myself that there are different ways of being an activist. That I can look for ways that feel authentic to me to care for the things that I care about. That to care for the things that are near to the heart of God. And those are the things that I want to put myself as close to. So I can tell myself that there's not one way to be an activist. I can participate in ways and things that I care about and try to bring myself closer to the things that God cares about. I want to care about the, thing that, the things that God cares about. And I can find the ways in which I can do that. And then I can remind myself that posting on social media doesn't make me an activist. Doesn't. In short, that's an ABC worksheet. And afterwards, when I think, oh gosh, okay. I don't have to put, I, posting on social media doesn't make me an activist. There are more than one way to be an activist. And I can find the matters close to the heart of God that are close to mine and try to bring those things as close to possible as much of the time as I can. That makes me feel hopeful. It makes me feel excited. It makes me feel like I matter, like what I'm doing matters and that I can do more to make a difference. Whereas when I believed that I'm not an activist, I felt paralyzed and I felt frozen and embarrassed. That's the power of breaking down our thoughts. That's really the power, the negative power of a limiting belief. And so that's why it's so important to break down those thoughts, to not take them as face value and to figure out something that is more accurate and realistic. So whenever you're going about this, whenever you have a thought that just keeps tripping you up, I would ask, I would encourage you to ask yourself, is this realistic and helpful? Does this make me come alive? How can I support others while being true to myself? Thanks for coming today. I'm glad that you're here. This is Theology Therapist. You are welcome here. Remember, if, if you like this, you know, ways to show your support by liking that button, pressing subscribe, sharing with a friend, leaving a comment below. I'm so happy to have you here. See you soon.